Hey, thanks for joining us once again on the bright side. I want to continue talking about nitrates, those much maligned molecules, nitrates and nitrites. Nitrites are the active form. Nitrates and nitrites are, uh, have been maligned now for going on 40 years since the 1970s when some studies came out that indicated that they may be associated with the formation of cancer-causing compounds, nitrosamines. But these days, nitrates are being considered by many nutritionists, many scientists, as a type of nutrient. Bodybuilders and athletes and marathon runners and Olympic, Olympic athletes especially are using nitrate drinks pre-workout, post-workout to boost energy levels. It makes sense when you think about it. If you understand nitrates and nitrites and how they work, they're important as a, as a raw material for making that all-important stuff. Nitric oxide, they're important for blood pressure. Uh, they can help you if you've got immune problems as well. If you want to bump up your nitrates and nitrites, now that, you're, now that you've, uh, you've heard all the benefits associated with them, the best way is to make sure you're getting enough vegetables. Think veggies, 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 spinach, arugula, kale, celery. These are all wonderful sources of nitrates. Parsley is one of my all-time favorite sources of nitrates. It's one of my all-time favorite veggies. I used to make a, a, uh, a, mouth, a mouth rinse with parsley oil. Parsley can help, help kill bacteria in your mouth that cause bad breath especially if you're drinking onion juice and garlic juice. I used to drink, I used to do a veggie juice. I haven't done it in a while, but I used to do a veggie juice every day. I would go to the health food store and they'd make me this big veggie juice and I always made sure they had lots of onion and lots of garlic in there, but then I couldn't talk to anybody for a while. Apparently, people don't like the smell of onion and garlic. I don't know why. It's just sulfur. But anyway, I would chew on a sprig of parsley or a couple sprigs of parsley afterwards and voila, no more onion breath, no more garlic breath. That's because of the chlorophyll in the parsley. The chlorophyll that gives parsley and other veggies too, the green, their green color is really a, a wonderful way to, to purify your breath. Chlorophyll also has its own nutritional value. Chlorophyll is like hemoglobin for a plant. It's very similar to the hemoglobin. Hemoglobin is a, an element in our blood that helps carry oxygen. And interestingly, chlorophyll is very similar, has a real similar, it's almost exactly the same as hemoglobin, except for instead of iron, it carries magnesium. In any case, you can get your chlorophyll from parsley and other veggies, of course, too. But, but parsley is just a really, really neat little veggie for a lot of reasons. Life Extension Magazine, I don't really, I don't pay too much attention to some of the stuff in Life Extension Magazine. They're always selling something, but there's an article on parsley in this month's uh, what is it, in the March 2015 issue about parsley. Parsley, more than a decorative garnish, and it is really much more than a decorative garnish. It's also a great source of nitrates and nitrogen. Ancient Greeks used to treat parsley as a brain stimulant. They used to have a saying, say, uh, that, uh, they used to have a saying in uh, ancient Greece about ideas, and if an idea hadn't come to fruition, they would say, well, it's still in the parsley stage. They also used to have a saying about sick people uh, referring to the fact that they needed parsley. I don't, I don't remember how it went in Greece, but it had something to do with that person needs parsley. Parsley's got eye protection value, skin protection value. It's got the same antioxidants that you'll find in the Vision FX, similar antioxidants to the Vision FX. And of course, it is also a great source of nitrates and nitrites. If you're post-surgery or post-workout, or perhaps as a, a general anti-aging substance, or if you're a bodybuilder, if you're a weightlifter, it's kind of interesting how via its nitrate and nitrate content that parsley, along with spinach and lettuce and green leafy vegetables, can be as important for bodybuilding or similar anyway, if not equally valuable as beef and as dairy and as eggs and other high protein foods, they can certainly be a way to boost up the, your nitrogen levels in the body and help you build muscle. And of course, it's also important for nitric oxide. Nitric oxide is not just, a, it's not just helpful for folks dealing with cardiovascular disease or brain health issues or who have, uh, people who have high blood pressure. Nitric oxide also helps oxygenate muscles. So if you're lifting weights or you're trying to get back in shape or have your body tone, nitric oxide can help deliver oxygen and nutrients to your muscles. They can give you a little bit of a pump too. One of the reasons why you get a pump after you work out, uh, and if you're really, if you've been doing it for a while, you get that vascular look, is because the body is trying to deliver oxygen and nutrients to your muscle. You can support this, this process of, uh, of oxygen delivery and nutrient delivery and detoxification by using vegetable juices after your workout, or vegetable juices even before your workout. And of course, if you're dealing with circulatory problems, if you have blood clots, or you're worried about high blood pressure, nitric oxide is a key player for helping 
improve the movement of blood for everybody, not just bodybuilders and athletes. It's a circulation promoter, nitrates and nitric oxide. And this is only, it's not only important for building, building muscle and, and post-surgery and post-workout and anabolism, as they say, anabolism means building. Deficiencies in nitrates or deficiencies in nitric oxide can lead to circulation problems, clogs, lack of movement, lack of movement in the lymph and the blood. And all of this is major, all of these are major players when it comes to degenerative disease. So supporting nitric oxide by using vegetables and nitrates and nitrite boosting can be important for all degenerative disease. Clotting stagnant blood, blood that's not moving, is the immediate cause. It's the thread that runs through all chronic degenerative disease. In fact, if you want to simplify things, and I'm always about simplifying things when it comes to health, you can assume that your chronic degenerative disease, whether it's uh, arthritis or autoimmune problems or heart problems, whatever it is, you can assume that your chronic degenerative disease, underneath everything, there's an element of stagnant, sticky uh, circulatory fluids, blood and from lymph, which is to say, if you're dealing with any health crisis, I'm talking heart disease, autoimmune disease, cancer, anything that gets worse over time, anything that doesn't heal the way it's supposed to, anything that progresses, a chronic, this is, this is what chronic degenerative disease is, it's 80% or so of our health care costs in this country, and most of the things that we suffer from has an element of chronic degeneration. If you're dealing with any of these things, eat your veggies, drink your spinach juice, or your beet juice, or your celery juice, or eat your parsley, get you some nitrates in your body, but not from bacon, not from processed foods. We'll talk about that when we come back from our break. I'm Pharmacist Ben. 844-236-6010 is our number. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back after this. So if you're interested in taking advantage of nitrates and nitrites, now that we've been talking about them for a couple of weeks and how important they are for health, how important they are for athletic performance, for brain health issues, for, for cardiovascular health issues, just for overall health issues, I think, in my opinion, one of the most important reasons why you want to eat and drink your veggies, eat your veggies or drink veggie juice, is because of the nitrates, which are, uh, you don't, you can't really, they don't really tell you the nutritional, uh, the, the concentration of nitrates and nitrites, because the nutritional value of these things is only now starting to be recognized. It used to be that these were bad guys, and they are bad guys when they're in bacon. So all of this talk about nitrates and nitrites and their health value should not be construed as an endorsement of bacon or hot dogs or processed meats, especially if you're frying them or grilling them. That's really where you run into problems with nitrates and nitrites, when they're grilled or when they're heated, when they're fried. That's why you, one of the reasons, anyway, why you want to only steam your vegetables or lightly braise your vegetables. You don't want to fry or grill nitrates or nitrates because that's a great way to bump up your, your levels of uh, the cancer-causing carcinogenic nitrosamines. And it's these nitrosamines that really are the bad guys. And the more nitrosamines you eat, and it means the more hot dogs you're eating, the more you're going to have a problem. Nitrates and nitrites are preserved as in meat, and they, they give the meat, uh, give processed meats the sort of red color, the characteristic red color that hot dogs have is really a reaction between the nitrates and, the, and some of the chemicals that are found in the meats. So you don't want to be eating bacon. Bacon is not a health food. Hot dogs are not a health food. Processed meats of any kind are not health foods, even though they're preserved with high, concentration, high concentrations of nitrates and nitrites. This is really where they do present a health hazard. And these days, nitrate-free is like all the rage and all the buzz in the world of processed foods. There's processed foods that say nitrate-free, but they're not nitrate-free. They still have nitrates, but they get their nitrates from vegetables, celery juice, celery in particular is used uh, as a preservative for meat, celery juice, I should say, because it has a high nitrate content. In fact, the nitrate content of celery juice that's used to, uh, to preserve processed meats, it's not just regular celery juice, not like they take celeries and juice it and stick it in the hot dogs. They actually uh, ferment the celery, they add bacteria to the celery, and then the, cel the bacteria in the celery produce these super high concentrations of nitrates and nitrites. Bacteria use nitrates and nitrates and produce nitrates and nitrites too, just like everything, all living things do. And so these, the, the celery is process with bacteria. The bacteria make nitrates, super high concentrations of nitrates, and you get this nitrate-rich broth that's just as powerful as any artificial nitrate, and that's what's being added to the so-called nitrate-free meats and nitrate-free processed foods. You guys, 
Processed foods, especially processed protein, processed high protein foods, are never good for you. And now I'm not saying that they're, the celery nitrates are necessarily toxic and carcinogenic, carcin carcinogenic, but whether or not it is, is anyone's guess, you're still dealing with high concentrations of artificially induced nitrates. And if you're uh, subjecting these kinds of nitrate-free, supposedly nitrate-free foods to high heat, you're gonna have the same problems as you do uh, with artificial nitrates. The gold standard of nitrate containing foods is beet juice. Sometimes they call it beet root juice, uh, but it's basically just beet juice. Beet is a root, so beet juice or beet root juice, whatever you want to call it, is being used now for its anabolic, for its building effects and post-workout benefits. And I think it's because of the sugar, because beet juice is pretty darn sweet. Beets in general are pretty darn sweet. And um, personally, if I think if you're going to get your uh, nitrates from veggies, you might want to throw in some spinach or some parsley or some of the more savory or even bitter vegetables. In any case, if you want to do a sweet drink, beet juice is probably a lot better for you than Coca-Cola or, uh, or an artificially sweetened beverage. There's a lot of high-powered athletes, famous athletes, Olympic weightlifters and triathletes who are raving about beetroot juice and under the category of you heard it here first on the bright side in the same way that electrolytes took the, the uh, world of athletes and the sports world by storm back in the 1980s and 1990s with Gatorade and other electrolyte drinks, I am predicting that nitrates are going to be the 21st century version of electrolytes and you're probably going to start to see commercials for a nitrate nitrate rich drink or a nitrate rich drink, an artificial drink, etc. But you don't need you don't need an artificial beverage to get your nitrates and nitrites. You can get them from vegetables and make your own vegetable juices. Get a Vitamix. Get a Vitamix. If you have a juicer, a standard ordinary juicer, you're probably losing the fiber. Most juices, most juicers will extract the juice and then throw out the fiber. And fiber is really good. If you do have one of those juicers, save the fiber and you can you can extend your meats with it and other foods that you're cooking with it and you can put it in your soups. The fiber is really Really, really good stuff, and that's why I like the Vitamix and other products. Now, there's other high-powered blenders like the Vitamix, and these high-powered high blenders not only get you the juice, they break up the vegetable and turn it into liquid, especially if you add water, but you save the fiber, which is really important. So get a Vitamix, make your own veggie juices, beet juice, celery juice, uh, uh, bell peppers. Those are wonderful sources of nitrates. Onions, garlic, all of these are good sources of nitrates, and make yourself veggie juices. And I'll tell you what, you guys, if you're on antihypertensive, beta blocker drug, blood pressure lowering drug, a veggie juice can do the same thing for you via this whole nitric oxide, uh, via its nitric oxide or nitrate, uh, nitrate content and nitric oxide boosting effect as a nasty toxic prescription drug. Why the heck would anybody stand in line at a pharmacy and humiliate themselves at a doctor's office and, and subject themselves to poking and prodding and, and doctor intelligence or lack thereof for their hypertension or cardiovascular disease when you can get the same things from a, a, a big old glass of vegetable juice. A big old glass of vegetable juice that's non-toxic, that gives you multiple benefits, that's cheap, and, and doesn't require interfacing with the medical model and has no toxicity associated with it. Drink your beetroot juice. If you've got a high blood pressure, any kind of circulatory issue or brain health issue, or your post-surgery or pre-surgery, drink your veggie juice. Drink beet juice. It's delicious. Nobody can tell you, nobody can ever say they don't like beet juice. It's so sweet. You can cut, you'll even have to cut it with something. It's so sweet. Beet juice has been shown to be an effective way to improve blood pressure, uh, improve circulatory health in general. And if it was, if it was me, I'd be cutting it, but you don't even need to cut it. If you want to cut it, cut it with a little celery juice, which kind of takes the, the edge off of the sweet taste, or maybe a little spinach juice, uh, and that will kind of reduce the jolt, the sugar jolt that you get from your beet juice. All right, got a few more things to say about nitrates and nitrites. We'll do that tomorrow. And then I'm going to tell you about a really interesting strategy that you can use to boost the availability of nitrates and nitrites from your vegetables. We'll do that tomorrow. On the bright side, I want to get, see if we can squeeze a couple phone calls in before we go to our break. Let's... Uh, Let's go to Roxana in South Carolina. What's up, Roxana? Welcome to the bright side. Hi. Um, hey. <laughs> oh, Roxana. Know... Roxana, sweetheart. What? I'm so sorry. The music is playing. I always do that. I got to oh. figure out. I got to figure out how to do that better. That's my fault. Can you hang on through the break? Sure. Thank you so much. I, I apologize. Got to figure out the timing on that a little better. That's my fault. Hang on. If you're on the hold, we'll get to you when we come back. Eight four four two three six sixty ten is our number. You're listening to the bright side on the Genesis Communication Network. 
Okay, we're back on the bright side. 844-236-6010 is our number. Roxanna in South Carolina. What's up? Uh, yes, I just wanted to know, where would I go to buy your new skin products? Ah, thank you for asking. The new skincare oh. products, because of my... Uh, my non-compete, I sold my old company and I had a non-compete, I had to sign a non-compete and I can't really sell the products except on the internet. So the products will all be sold via the web, we've got a website coming up and you'll definitely hear about it on this program. But I'll tell you what Roxana, if you send me an email, Ben at KSCO.com, put your address there, I'll send you a couple samples ahead of time just for being sweet and asking, uh, oh, asking about the products, wonderful. I'll send you a couple samples. Make sure you use the products really sparingly. Um, I'm, uh-huh. I'm kind of trying to, I'm, uh, I've been making products, skincare products for many years and I've been making them in my pharmacy and when I made them in the pharmacy, I made them super medicinal and I didn't put any filler, I didn't put any water, I didn't put any preservatives because they were pharmacy products and I started mm. using them myself and I started using, giving them to my friends, my girlfriend, my mom. And everybody loved the products, and I loved the products. They were all active material. There was no crap in there, no preservatives or fragrances or water or anything. You know, it always it always uh, shocked me how people would spend so much money on a product, and it would be mostly stuff that their face or their skin couldn't use. You know, most skincare yeah. products, when you use them, are over eighty to or eighty to ninety percent, even more, ninety five, ninety six percent stuff you can't use, stuff that doesn't help wow. your skin. It's only there so they can sell you the product. That's what the water's for, and that's what the wax is for, and the emulsifiers and the preservatives. They're not there for you. They're there for the skincare company. So in my pharmacy, wow. I was just I was just giving people products that were made with everything. Or the, all the components in the product were there for you, not for me. And so the oh, concept I'm... of the new products, I call them the truth because it is the truth. You know, shouldn't be paying for anything you're not using. And when you use mm-hmm. these products, but what it means, Roxanne, is you got to use very little bits, tiny, tiny, okay. tiny, small amounts. So send me an email, what... ben, ben at ksco.com with your street address, mm-hmm. and I'll send you some samples. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Um, uh, no, I'm sorry. What was the address again? Ben at what? Ben at K for King. S for mm-hmm. Sam, C for Cat, O for Oscar. Ben at ksco.com. Oh, wonderful. Okay, thank thanks you for so thank very you, much. And thank you for calling. Have you tried these yet, or is this the first time? <laughs> okay, thank you so much. Uh, mm-hmm. Roxanne, have you used the, Roxanne, have you used the products yet? Have I sent you samples before, or no? No, no, okay, no. Good. This would be my first time. But um, I heard so much about you, and I've been listening to the programs that you had with um, Amanda. Oh, okay. And Oh, I'm just fascinated, and I'm, I'm really looking forward to, to buying this product. Good deal. Thanks for calling, Roxanne. appreciate it. Thank we'll talk you. again. Okay, bye-bye. Mary in Michigan, welcome to the Bright Side. What's up? Hi, Ben. Um, I've got a couple questions for you. They shouldn't sure. take too awfully long. Sure. Um, I'm curious. First of all, you were talking about parsley. Yeah. Uh, Hulda Clark uh, recommended a parsley tea for a kidney cleanse. She's a wise woman, Hulda Clark. Is she still alive? I I don't think so. Yeah, she wrote, uh, you're talking about the gal who wrote The Cure for All Diseases. And, right. Yeah, right. yeah, she's great. I, I read her books many, many years ago. I'm not, a, I don't I buy into everything she's talking about, but certainly there's right. lots of great wisdom in her books. Uh, the Cure for All Diseases was one. What was the other one? Do you remember? Uh, the cure, cure for All Cancers? Cancer yeah. and, um, oh shoot, what was the other? There were three of them. Cure- <laughs> I read The Cure for All Diseases many, many years ago, back in the early 90s. Well, and she then, recommended a parsley tea. Okay. Uh, and now, so my question is, wh- yeah, you were talking about heat and the, uh, yeah. the nitrates. Yeah, you don't want to heat. Well, nitrates aren't too affected by heat, but you don't want to heat. I'm sorry, nitrates themselves, if you, bo- if you really put high heat in there, they'll turn into nitrosamines, uh, and that's the cancer-causing stuff. But just heat uh, from a tea, you're not going to really affect your nitrates too much. Just, just If you just heat them from a tea or you slightly steam your veggies, that's not going to affect them too much. Unfortunately, uh, the nitrates and the nitrites and a lot of the phytonutrients aren't going to really come out as effectively in the tea as they would if you add, uh, if you add oil to your veggies. Um, and if, you're uh-huh. make a, if you're going to make a tea, try to put a little bit of oil in there, uh, maybe coconut oil or something, and then you might want to throw in some lecithin to pull the whole thing together. It's, of course, it won't taste like a tea after all of that stuff is added <laughs> to it, but you'll be able to get much more of the nutritional value out of your veggies, out of your parsley. Uh, but a tea is still good. You can still get some good stuff out of a tea. Certainly, vitamin C is com- going to come out, and I wouldn't worry too much about the heat. Just don't boil it or anything. Like that. Bring it to a boil for a long period of time. Okay, okay. And, and um, 
So you were talking about the nitrates being in beans? Well, beans, yeah. Beans are okay. actually a good source. There's lots of good sources. Beans in particular have these bacteria, these nitrogen-fixing bacteria attached to their roots. And then you get the nitrogen, and you also get the benefits of the vitamin B12 that these bacteria produce. Is that what you're referring to? Uh, well, kind of, but my, my, the way I'm eating the beans is I'm fermenting them. That's the way you want to do it. Always want to do it. That way you get a lot of the, a lot of the value, a lot of the nutritional value from the beans that you wouldn't get otherwise. You always want to, if you can, sprouting and adding a little bit of water and letting them sit overnight so the, so the, the life force is activated out of the bean, which in, at the end of the day is a seed. That's always the best way to do it. It's kind of it takes a little bit more effort, so, uh, you know, so a lot of folks don't want to take, take the time to do it. ahead of time. Exactly, <laughs> and so a lot of folks don't want to do that, but if you do have time and you want to plan ahead, that is absolutely a better way to do, uh, well, to do I, all I your told veggies. You, I told you I'd gotten the book, The Art of Fermentation, and she explains how to ferment beans and how to use them afterwards, and so I've been doing that. And what are you noticing? Anything? Oh, I, I love it. I just love it. It's do you notice more energy or any changes in blood pressure or anything like that? Um, well, I, I more don't filling. Think I, Are they more satisfying for you? Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I can go longer with without being hungry again. That's that what you're looking thing. for. That's what you're uh, looking for. Because you know, there's, exactly. there's, there's uh, I guess there's no, no sugar in there. I don't know about beans as far as uh, being like, uh, like a starch or anything. Yes, I don't know if... they do have sugars in them, complex sugars. But those complex sugars are burnt up or used up as you're sprouting. So you get. Well, they're not one... sprouted. They're not sprouted. They're dried beans okay. that are soaked. And okay. then, then ground up and fermented that way. Ah, I see. So you're not actually sprouting. But even still, the fermentation process, the bacteria involved in there are going to burn up those starches and sugars. They're going to use those sugars and produce nutrients. And so instead of sugars, you'll get nutritional value. And that's one of the advantages to fermenting. Does that make sense okay. how I explain that? Yeah, the ba- yeah The absolutely. bacteria turn the sugar into B vitamins and other protein and other ah, nutrients. Yeah, so okay. instead of the starches, which is really what causes the problems with beans, those complex sugars, now you're getting those sugars are transformed into usable nutrients by the magic of bacteria, the magic of bacterial process. And it is okay. really magical. All okay, right. Now, my, my main question, and this is what I really called about. Okay. Can you explain how you should uh, take digestive enzymes and HCL? How you should take them? With foods? Yeah, I mean, can, you know, um, my, um, can, does the HCL yeah. kill the digestive enzymes? No. No, the HCL activates the digestive enzymes. Enzymes are activated by acid. Digestive enzymes are turned on by acid. Ordinarily, that would happen in your stomach. You you would eat foods that contain digestive enzymes. The hydrochloric acid in your stomach would activate them. If you do supplemental enzymes, then you want to make sure that either you're producing enough acid in your stomach, which many people don't, or you're using a little apple cider vinegar, or you're taking a digestive enzyme product like the Ultimate Enzymes that has HCL in it. You can also take extra HCL, or you can have a a physician or a prescription and a pharmacist compound HCL drops for you. But acidification, lowering the pH of your digestive juices with the digestive enzymes you're taking, activates the enzymes. Well, now, don't you have, I mean, when you eat vegetables, aren't they broken up by the alkalinity as opposed to the acidity? No, 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 no. Where are you getting that from? There's no alkalinity. Oh, I don't there's know. Sh- <laughs> no, <laughs> they're broken up by acid. Out. No, acid, 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 acid. Acid in the stomach. The blood should be alkaline. The liquid, the fluids in your body should be alkaline. But digestive juices need to be acidic to do their work. Okay. okay. Thank you, okay, Mary. Thank you so much. Have a beautiful day. All right, we'll get your phone calls. Uh, if you're on hold, hang on. We'll get to you when we come back from our break. And we do have a couple lines open. 844-236-6010 is our number. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back after this. Okay, welcome back to The Bright Side. Pharmacist Ben here. If you've uh, sent me a Facebook message on my personal Facebook page, I apologize for not getting back to you. Uh, I don't check my personal page that much, but if you if you uh, like my my skincare page, the Truth with Ben, uh, you'll get quicker quicker response if you put uh, if you send me a message. That's the, the Truth with Ben, and then you will also post. I also post stuff about skincare, and we'll also post information about the Truth skincare pro, skin health products that will be coming out here in the next couple of weeks. That's the Truth with Ben. That's my Facebook page, and if you click like on there. I'll have you set up for email uh, email responses, and also you'll get information about our new products that should be out here in the next couple of weeks. Okay, John in Texas, what's up? Welcome to the Bright Side. Hello, this is Jean-Pierre. Hello, Jean-Pierre. Au revoir. Yes. What's up? <laughs> How are you, you doing, buddy? Um, 
I'm doing okay. I'm just calling. I'm trying to figure out. I've been suffering from sleep apnea for a okay. uh, few years now. You want and some help with that? Like you know what you reckon? Yes, sir. How old are you, John? Approximately. 60. Well, no, 57. Sorry. 57. Okay. Okay, good. Height to weight, approximately? Uh, 6 to uh, 1, um, uh, 220. Okay, good. Sleep apnea, you want to think about inflammation, uh, pressure that's being put uh -huh. on the, the, parts, the, the parts of your nose and your, uh, your windpipe, the areas where you breathe, mostly in the head area. Uh, so you want to think about inflammation, diabetes, blood sugar problems, probably some digestive issues as well. Diabetes, obesity, blood sugar problems are all linked to uh, sleep apnea, and then digestive issues are linked to blood sugar problems. And surprise, surprise, if you listen to this program, we say it all the time, this is the triangle of disease. And this is the classic cause of all degenerative issues. Sleep apnea is a symptom of a degenerative crisis. The body's breaking down and it's not healing. There's inflammation going on. Whenever you have inflammation, you want to think about something that's getting into the pristine, sacred space of the body, the blood that shouldn't be. And that means the food. That means through foods and, and digestive issues. So first you work on the digestive system. Do everything you need to do to correct digestive problems. Do a food diary, eliminate problem foods. If you know you're constipated or have gas or heartburn or bloating or loose stools or anything, you're ahead of the game. If not, you got to find those symptoms and then link those up to foods and then eliminate those foods. And by the way, for everybody listening, I'm not just talking to John and I'm not just talking sleep apnea. I'm pretty much talking about all degenerative disease symptoms. Anything you can name from hypertension to cancer to sleep apnea, whatever, autoimmunity, whatever. Focus on the digestive system. Look for problem foods. Eliminate those and then start to patch up the gut with probiotics, the Biolumin Nightly Essence, the Fucoidin Z. You can use glutamine powder, whey protein, Protein. Um, zinc is very important for the digestive system, also from helping make stomach acid, apple cider vinegar after all your meals, anything you can think of to support digestive health and wellness. And then the blood sugar connection, and by the way, once you start working on the blood sugar, you'll notice, you'll notice that you're losing weight, you'll notice that your circulatory symptoms are improving as well, and that means the sweeties, chromium and vanadium, smaller amounts or zero tolerance if you got enough willpower to do that, uh, at least smaller amounts of sweet foods and things that spike your blood sugar. After all sweet foods and, and starchy foods and anything that spikes your blood sugar, use the sweeties, chromium vanadium, use some magnesium, and just something as simple as drinking a lot of water after you eat these kinds of foods can help dilute your blood sugar and support your blood sugar system, your blood sugar processing system. Some nutrients that also are helpful for blood sugar include zinc, which does double duty, also will help you with your digestive system. 50 milligrams, 5-0 of zinc picolinate. You can use uh, the magnesium in the Beyond OsteoFX will help you uh, stabilize your blood sugar and a couple of neat amino acids uh, for working with blood sugar. Taurine, love that stuff, 100 to 200 milligrams a day. And then arginine, which we'll be talking about here probably next week because arginine is also important for its nitrogen content, but arginine also helps, process, helps you process sugar. And then I also like alpha lipoic acid for processing sugar. And then last but not most certainly not least, you can improve sleep apnea symptoms by practicing slow deep breathing a couple minutes in the morning couple minutes at night especially before you go to bed and just uh, just doing some slow deep breathing maybe two or three minutes before you go to bed can improve sleep apnea symptoms as well so digestion blood sugar and then make sure you're practicing your deep breathing techniques and if that sounds familiar it should because it's what we always talk about that's the triangle of disease the digestive systems the blood sugar system and then the adrenal stress system which is where oxygen comes in does that make sense john it surely does. Would okay. you say glaucoma and joint pain would be associated oh, with the Absolutely, 100%. There's no way okay. you just, John, I, there's no way you just have sleep apnea. That's just one symptom. That's a yeah. leaf on the disease tree, and you got multiple leaves got once you have sleep, sleep apnea. So everything will improve. Okay? That's the beautiful thing about Thank these strategies. So much, Thank you. God bless. That's the beautiful thing about these strategies, you guys. You know, you go to the doctor, and he may give you a drug for your sleep apnea, or he won't even, but if you have a, there's no drugs for sleep apnea, but if you have a, a degenerative crisis, or a symptom, you may get a drug for that, but that's not going to help you. It might mask your symptoms. It might doctor you, fake your body out. That's what it means to doctor. It means to fake or to commit a fraud. When you doctor your taxes or you doctor your evidence in court, that's committing a fraud. And so when you doctor your symptoms, that's committing a fraud. It makes it look like you're better, but you're not. And then you got to deal with toxicity and side effects. The beautiful thing about the strategies we talk about here on this program every day is you get multiple beneficial effects instead of side effects. They're non-toxic. They're cheap and they're free, and they allow us 
to take care of ourselves without having to go to the white coat, without having to go to the, uh, the, um, the medical authority, the medical professional who is, will in his divine wisdom tell you what to do. If you're satisfied, if you want to go to some authority figure to tell you what to do, there's plenty of them out there. There's plenty of doctors out there. But if you really want to take care of your health yourself and you don't want to interface with a, a medical deity, who more, more than likely doesn't know what the heck is going on with biochemistry anyway. By the way, did you guys hear about uh, now doctors tell you, now doctors are saying that you can eat eggs and you can eat cholesterol-containing foods and they don't affect your heart. We'll talk about that. I'm going to try to talk about that tomorrow because that's scandalous the way I look at it. So if you trust your medical professional, more power to you. But if you're suspicious as you should be because they're always correcting themselves and changing themselves, they're always wrong on some level, these are ideas, the ideas we talk about on this program are ways that you can take advantage of your own, our own, God-given ability, our divinely mandated ability to heal. Breathing correctly, stabilizing your blood sugar, working on the digestive system, eliminating problem foods. These are all wonderful strategies that we can, use, we can take advantage of ourselves. Rudy in Texas, what's up? Welcome to the Bright Side, buddy. Hello, Mr. Ben Fuchs. Uh, thank you for uh, allowing me to be on the c phone call. I, I do know some folks at my church that promote your show and promote your uh, awesome. good health uh, dietary uh, needs all the time, so I'm a very appreciative of that. Thank you. Uh, I have my Tangy Tangerine that I drink every day as well as um, uh, Slender FX. Uh, nice. My yeah, so, uh, but uh, this may be a little bit off topic, uh, yeah. Mr. Fuchs. But I just uh, wanted to mention to your, to you and your listening audience, there's been another gentleman, uh, Dr. Kent Hovind. Are you aware of the man, sir? No, I haven't. Tell me about him. Okay, well, he's, he was promoting good dietary, uh, dietary, you know, eat, eat right and GMO foods, and he was making the public aware. And uh, he's an if, MD. If I, Is he an MD? Uh, he, he, no, he's not an MD. He was, uh, he was, uh, he's, he's received his doctorate in theology, I believe. Okay. But uh, he's, he's an innocent man in prison. Um, well, Okay. And I know it's a little bit off topic for your particular show, but uh, if people, he's, he is a truly an innocent man in prison. That's what did he go? What's he in prison for? For speaking the speaking the truth? Speaking the truth about yeah. uh, uh, the the, uh, the you know Kim Trails and the New World Order and the truth about uh, creation science. He he promoted the truth about the biblical creation science. And there's a website uh, freekenthoven dot com if your listeners care to investigate him. But okay. Uh, it, it's What's really the direct? What did they? What did they? What was the direct charge? What was the trumped up charge they put him in jail? They, are you familiar with the, the crime of structuring, sir? No, I'm not. What is that? It's a, it's a fancy word. That, you know, they always use these fancy words to make it sound so, uh, you know, like it's money laundering or fraud. But it's absolutely. Uh, if, if anybody looks into the crime of structuring, it's withdrawing money from your own bank, your own money from your own bank. And a lot of people donated to his ministry because he was telling the truth and he was making an impact against, uh, you know, the establishment. And uh, when he was making that impact, um, they, you know, they came jail. against him and they've, they've, they've tried to silence him. They're, they're threatening to put him in prison for the rest of his life. So that, the feds the state is it the federal government or the state the federal government the federal, federal government. government absolutely oh. atrocious what what's happened to the man and uh freekenthoven.com i'm really asking people to educate themselves and to look into his case and we're trying to uh, bring public awareness uh he doesn't hide from anything he's a, he's a bold man of god he's a baptist minister uh, he, he doesn't you know drink he doesn't cuss you know he's just wanted to win people to to you know to the lord and uh, they've come against him to quieten him and so i appreciate uh, you know, you, you allowing me to, to mention this. I know it's a little bit off topic. But That's all right. I appreciate dietary. you bringing it up. I, did, I hadn't heard of him, and I appreciate you bringing that to my attention. So it's free. Okay. Caddy spell Hoven. H-O-V-E-N. H-O-V-I-N-D. Free. Hoven. Hovind, H-O-V-I-N-D. Please look into his case. Uh, anybody that's listening, and uh, we're trying to raise public awareness about his case. I appreciate you bringing that up. Thanks, Rudy. Have a beautiful day, buddy. We'll talk to you again. All right. That's all the time we have for today. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Thanks for listening, friends. Check out my blog, PharmacistBen.com, if you want more good health information. And also, we'd love to have you on the Brightside Ben team. Call the phone team at 866-735-2470. They can tell you all about it. Tomorrow, we'll continue talking about nitrates. We'll talk about a really cool way to, to jack up the nitrate value of your salads and also your veggie juices, if you so desire. We'll do that tomorrow on the Bright Side. Thanks for listening, friends. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Have yourselves a wonderful, spectacular, beautiful day. We'll talk to you all later. Bye for now.